To face the coronavirus crisis, the European Union is at a turning point. Will it face it divided or united? Because there are three crises at a time. First and foremost, a health crisis. For that health crisis, the EU must ensure sufficient coordination between member states uh, for the transport of essential goods, medical services, um, uh, medical material, testing policies also, and also when necessary, uh, some hospitals must exchange patients in between uh, states in the case hospitals are overloaded. Um, we must ensure also that nobody is left behind and that specific measures are taken to protect the lives of homeless peoples, refugees, but also asylum seekers and uh, prisoners. And um, uh, of course, every evening we can uh, applaud um, health workers and the best to protect them is also to stay at home and follow the rules but tomorrow is even a, great, a greater challenge, which is to rebuild our health system that have been destroyed by years of austerity measures. The second crisis is a social crisis. We have on one hand essential workers that must keep on work, working across the European Union, but they must be protected and we should project the resources in the European Union and make sure that member states keep sufficient reserves of uh, mask, gel and everything that we need because the European Union is way too dependent of um, supplies coming from outside of the, of the Union. Um, on the other hand, there are many workers that should have stopped working and stay at home but cannot because there is insufficient protection for them and compensation system which are different in each member state. Now it's time for the European Union to speak with, with one voice and decide which sector is essential to face the, cri the crisis and properly uh, protect those workers and for all of the others stay at home because there's no other way to deal and uh, face uh, the, the virus and get rid of it. And lastly, uh, there is a financial and economic crisis that is coming. In the very short term, we must shut down stock markets when high volatility thresholds um, have been met. And then to face it over the medium and long period of time, we have two tools um, to deal with the economic crisis. One is the budgetary tool and the uh, growth and stability pact has been suspended at the European Union level. It's a good news, but it needs to be suspended at the, uh, for a longer period of time because it not only it proved to be in, um, uh, insufficient, but states need to have the financial means to recover from that crisis, to invest in the health system, but also to deal uh, in the long term um, with, with the crisis. And the second tool is the monetary uh, tool where the European Central Bank, Bank has a very essential role to play and the bank should break free from its old rules and should be able to um, uh, provide liquidity directly to states but also to um, uh, small and medium enterprises and to households rather than uh, only to, to banks and fuel a sort of speculation bubble as it has been done in the past. In short, um, the, the old recipes and dogmas should not survive the, the virus because they've proved how inefficient they are. Obviously, there is already a huge impact of the coronavirus outbreak on the workforce. Many workers have to deal with measures of short-term work all over Europe. Others, unfortunately, already had to face, uh, had to experience layoffs because the production has been shut down. And that means that the task for politics today is to protect their jobs, to protect their income. And this also applies to those who work for small and medium enterprises. Our support and our solidarity to those who work in the health and care sector, who work in the hospitals today to fight the coronavirus. We have on the one hand to follow, of course, the competent authorities' advice to also protect their health. But on the other hand, we have 
to focus on improving their working and living conditions in the future, but not only in the future, in the present. And those also applies to all the people working in the so-called systemically relevant jobs in the public services. Hospitals don't need to be run like capitalist enterprises. They do not have to be profitable. Their job is to preserve the health of the people, to preserve the health of the society. And that also applies to all the public services. So what we need to do is to discuss the renationalization of public services. They shouldn't be part of the market-driven economy.